portion of the presentation will focus on how the board is organized, the different committees that make up your board, and new legislation regarding the officers and board membership. In highlighting the different disciplinary paragraphs, I'll be referring to new paragraph numbers from the 2012 book discipline. GBHEM has posted the red line, or the first draft, of BOM-related work on our website. You can download that as a PDF, and here's how you get there for that. I'm going to share my browser with you for a second. And it takes just a second to pop up. When you open your browser, type in gbhem.org, which brings you to the GBHEM homepage. On that page, you'll see a blue bar that says networking. And you can network that, or you can, un on that drop down menu, select Boards of Ordained Ministry. When you get to the Boards of Ordained Ministry page, you'll see across that green bar where it says red line or first draft of BOM related work. Click on the link to download the PDF, and that will pop up here for you to download. Another way that you can get to this page is by simply typing gbhcm.org slash BOM, and that will take you straight to the Boards of Ordained Ministry page. The paragraph that guides the Board's work is paragraph 635 in the 2012 Book of Discipline. To begin with, Board members are elected by the annual conference to a four-year term and cannot serve for more than 12 consecutive years. The Board's work is funded through the Conference Council on Finance and Administration. The discipline does outline minimum requirements for who is represented in the Board membership. You can see that there is a requirement for deacons and elders to serve on the Board, associate members and local pastors, and as well as a good mix of laity and clergy. If you look here at the requirement for local pastor, the 2012 General Conference clarified that a local pastor may serve on the Board. However, that person must be a full-time local pastor and someone who has completed the course of study. Take a second now to look at your board roster. Are all of these categories represented? Are there additional members that need to be added to fulfill these requirements? I'll give you a minute or two to look at that and confirm who fulfills the different requirements that are listed here. If you don't have it with you, I will be sharing this slide presentation with you at the end of today so that you can use this for future reference. OK. The discipline does not di dictate all of the board's officers. Your board can decide its officers based on the needs of your annual conference. However, a couple positions are required, namely the chair and the BOM registrar. Other positions are at the board's discretion and are typically the chairpersons of different subcommittees. Additionally, the general conference this year added a new position or the possibility of a new officer, the vocational discernment coordinator. And this is what the discipline says about it in the 2012 edition. As you can see, there is not much there about the vocational discernment coordinator and that person's responsibilities. The legislation was intentionally written to be permissive rather than restrictive, so annual conferences can structure this position in the way that works the best for them. However, the intent is to have someone at the board level who works with district committees, district superintendents, and the board to ensure that the candidacy mentoring process runs smoothly. This position was recommended by the Study of Ministry Commission and is someone with key responsibility for instituting group candidacy mentoring in your annual conference and training candidacy mentors. This person can also serve as an additional point of contact other than the district superintendent for those who are entering candidacy. Because so many candidates have reported that beginning candidacy or being assigned a mentor was a roadblock to the candidacy process, 
the vocational discernment coordinator position provides another way to ensure a good beginning for candidates. The person who fulfills these responsibilities can be a member of your board or a staff person with full or part-time responsibilities in this area. Now I want to look at the committees you'll need to have established in carrying out your work. As you can see, there are three required committees. The Executive Committee, the Conference Relations Committee, and the district committees on ordained ministry, which function as subcommittees of the board. I'll highlight the required committees on the next few slides, but other possible groups can be formed around issues of programming and other board functions. Other than those that are required, you establish committees at your board's discretion, and they are formed in such a way as to help you complete your board's work. So I've listed here some committees that you can consider as you organize your board, but you may have others. That will be up to you. Let's move now to taking a look at the three that are required. The first is the executive committee. The chair, the co-chair, vice chair, and BOM registrar serve on the executive committee. The chairs of the orders of deacons and elders and the fellowship of local pastors and associate members are also members of the board and its executive committee. GBHEM encourages that committee chairs serve on your executive committee along with the vocational discernment coordinator and the cabinet representative who is named by your bishop. Take a couple minutes now to look at the makeup of your executive committee. Who is on it? What tasks are assigned to each member? Are there any committees not represented that need to have someone there? Now we're going to shift and talk about the Conference Relations Committee. Another change coming out of this year's general conference is the mandate that all boards shall have a Conference Relations Committee or a CRC. This shall language is new from the 2012 General Conference and will be found in the new discipline, paragraph 635.1. Most boards already had this committee, but some assign the functions of conference relations to another subgroup. Many changes were made in the administrative fair process and complaint process this year. One of the outcomes from that legislation was to remove ineffectiveness from the judicial complaint process. This means that any recommendation to remove a clergy person from active status because of ineffectiveness will now solely be handled through an administrative fair process hearing overseen by the board. Additionally, the responsibility to hear any request for an involuntary status change and to make a recommendation to the board regarding the request is specifically assigned to the Conference Relations Committee. So any fair process hearing that your annual conference board deals with will start first in the Conference Relations Committee. Since these responsibilities are now clearly assigned to the CRC, the language in the discipline also changed to mandate a conference relations committee for all boards. Take a minute now to discuss your board's CRC or to look at the roster. Who is the chair and who are the members of that committee? Note as well that the discipline prohibits district superintendents from serving on the conference relations committee. So do you need to make any adjustments to the committee regarding the participation of district superintendents or do you need to look at your committee for gender balance and for racial ethnic diversity? Take just a minute to look at that and I'll be right back. We will provide more detailed information about the administrative fair process at the September 12th webinar. We will also offer a workshop for conference relations chairs at the training event this October in Dallas. I strongly encourage the chairs of this committee to attend both of these events. The final committee we'll look at today is the District Committee on Ordained Ministry. District committees are subcommittees of the board, and that's noted in paragraph 635.1F. The board names a representative for each district committee, and the board is responsible for training all DCOM members. 
The District Committee on Ordained Ministries Responsibilities will be outlined in paragraph 666 in the 2012 Book of Discipline. And as we talk about training the district committees, I want to show you where the training resources are on the GBHEM website. I'm going to share my browser with you again. And as you launch your browser, you can simply type in gbhem.org slash BOM training. And that will pull up a page with training resources. As you maneuver through that, you will see that there are resources available to train mentors, train registrars, to train your district committees, and to train your board of ordained ministry. You can simply click on one of those tabs and scroll down, and you will see PowerPoint presentations, different PDFs, and different types of guidelines and information that you can use in putting your training sessions together. These resources will be updated to reflect the new disciplinary numbers. For now, the paragraphs referred to are from the 2008 Book of Discipline, and I am working to get this updated as quickly as possible. The work of the board is all-encompassing in relationship to conference membership and in the recruitment, support, and ongoing formation of clergy leaders. From recruitment of new candidates to discernment events about set-apart ministry to continuing formation for active clergy to helping clergy transition into retirement, the work and ministry of the board provides ongoing support throughout a candidate's and clergy's relationship to the annual conference. Additionally, the board makes recommendations for final action to the clergy, clergy session of the annual conference regarding all status changes and membership issues, from licensing to provisional membership to ordination or to termination. There are three areas that you'll need to pay particular attention to this year because of the legislative changes. And those are transitional leave, security of appointment, and less than full-time appointment for elders. All three of these were affected by decisions made at General Conference and will impact the board's work in new ways. We will look more closely at the details of these paragraphs during the September 12 webinar. But for now, you can reference the new paragraphs in the red line edition of the discipline for more information. The transitional leave status was changed to add a paragraph allowing for the status of transitional leave for those who do not receive an appointment. The request for less than full-time appointment can now be initiated by the bishop or by the elder who will serve less than full-time. This type of appointment must also be recommended by the board to the clergy session for approval. And we are anticipating, just as you are, this fall's decision of the Judicial Council regarding security of appointments. So stay tuned for what is to come regarding that. As we close this portion of the webinar, I want to show you the banner head that our office uses for our e-newsletters. The one specifically for boards is green. We have different colors for different groups, but we always use the same format, so it will look like this. And I've been hearing from a few people lately that they still are not receiving these newsletters, which means that GBHEM does not have your updated contact information for new board officers. Please let me know if that is the case so we can work with you to update officers for the new quadrennium. My contact information will be on the next slide. Send me an email or type something into the Q&A section here, and I will follow up with you. We have already sent information out to register for the September 12th webinar on legislation, as well as information about the BOM quadrennial training event that will be in Dallas this October. Registration has opened for each of these with information in the e-newsletters on how to register. This provides an overview of the organization and work of the board. 
While we haven't had time today to go through all the details, my hope is that you have received some good resources and places to seek information when you need it. One of the resources available on the VOM webpage I shared earlier is the VOM handbook. As Glenn mentioned, you can get to the handbook by typing in gbhem.org slash VOM handbook. The handbook gives more details for each area of the board's work 